how exciting and fun would it be to go on a two week vacation to Greece with a longtime friend? What would y'all do the first day? Explore the ruins of the ancient Acropolis or try some of the must have local dishes? What if on day one, you found yourself being violently attacked and thrown off a bridge by the local police, waking up in a rundown makeshift hospital room, trying to get back home and save yourself before it's too late? This is not a what if, this is a true story. Please share this video on social media and with your friends and family as it may very well save someone's life. This is part one of Trouble in Paradise. Thanks for joining us on episode three of the Sway Production Show. This is Mr. Jeff Carmack. Yes, sir. Jeff, what do you have to tell us today? Uh, I was just going to tell you about my trip to uh, to Greece that happened in October of uh, 2022. Okay. And um, so, so it goes like this. Um, my youngest daughter was studying abroad in Rome. She was there for the fall semester. So a childhood friend of mine, one of my best, dearest friends, he was the only one I could get to go with me. And it started out, I was just going to go to Rome for, you know, a week or something like that. And it turned into a bucket list vacation trip for the two of us. And the plan was to fly, <clears throat> fly into Greece, into Athens, rent a car, and then travel all of Paul's stops and then a few places along the road that we were interested in. Uh, fly out of Thessaloniki on the north side of the island of, or the landmass of Greece, fly over to um, Istanbul, and we were going to go to the the capital there, which used to be Constantinople, the eastern mm -hmm. capital of the Roman Empire. And then we had a, a week, in, or maybe it was about five days, but in Sicily, on the water, rented this Airbnb, and Grace was going to come and, and bring some of her friends, so we were all really excited about that. And then spend the last week in Rome. And my daughter's dormitories for the university were literally a block from St. Peter's Cathedral. So we stayed, you know, our room was right there. Wow. And we had an epic thing. You know, it was just this big, long, epic trip that we worked out. It's going to be about three weeks. And day one, we arrived into Athens. We rented a car and drove to our Airbnb. And on the way to our Airbnb, we noticed that it seemed like kind of a poorer country. It's not, you know, was, you can just tell when you go into a place and it's real ritzy, obviously, and then run down and everything in between. And this seemed a little bit more run down. So we get to our Airbnb and it was actually okay. And we decided we were amped up. We weren't jet lagged. It's about noon. And so we thought, let's walk over to the, uh, the Acropolis and see the Parthenon and all that. Hmm. And uh, we did. So it's about three o'clock about this time, by the time we get over there and we're walking and my friend Chad is Chad Elric was uh, the guy I went with. He, um, he made some comment, like, it looks like Mogadishu. He used to be in the oh. military. I started laughing and I was like, it was cause there was uh, window units only graffiti everywhere, busted out windows and doors, uh, just blight and, and now looking back, I, I realized what happened, but mm. we didn't know when I was, well, let me get to it first. There's a whole yeah, lot of stuff. Yeah, take your time, take yeah. your time. First of all, I got one question. Sure. Explain, explain to the people, Paul, who is Paul, who, just oh, in case Paul they don't. Paul the Apostle okay. from the, from the Bible, you know, he went right. to Corinth, which is right there out of Athens right. and, and all his letters and epistles, whatnot. Okay. So we were going to follow those all the way up. And, and see, you know, we wanted to stop at uh, Thermopylae where they did 300. The right, movie, 300. right. That was on the way up. So we had a lot of places we are going to go. But Paul's, some of his uh, places, I apologize. It's, no problem. It's on silent now. No problem. So anyway, yeah, that was it. Uh, Paul the Apostle. And so we are walking around. We're trying to find the Acropolis from, from our Airbnb. And I don't know, it's about a mile, maybe a little bit more. But we're walking and it's Mogadishu bombed out and... Just poverty stricken, really surprisingly, and uh, we we stop. We're kind of tired. We want something to drink. We'd been walking. It's uphill mostly, <laughs> so and we're old. So we stop at a restaurant, and I was like, "It's got to be just right here." And I'll kind of walk around the corner, and there it is, and it's all its glory. And so we were just 
You're like, can you believe we're here? It was just really surreal that that we we're at the, you know, the I guess one of the birthplaces of Western civilization, right? Right. right. The Greeks, and um, so we sat there at this uh, restaurant. We had two glasses of wine and two entrees, and it was like eight bucks. It was just cheap, 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 dirt cheap. You can't get a drink for eight dollars, right? I mean, it's just absolutely. And all their food was amazing. They don't have any of the garbage food right. that we have here. It's really shocking. Are the portions smaller too? No, I didn't really notice that. But you know, I guess because it's got the actual nutrients right. in it, you're fulfilled when you right. you know have a piece of bread. You're actually satiated or whatever. But wow. it was fantastic food, and the colors were amazing. But. So we sat there, and then we wanted to move. We wanted to get a better place. So we walked around a corner, and there was this outside restaurant that sat over and looked, and they served you uh, food and whatnot. And so we sat there and met a guy from England, Peter, and we sat and we just traded stories and cool. traded. You know, we'd, we'd buy, we had a few glasses of wine. Nobody was getting hammered. It wasn't a party or anything like that, but we were drinking wine and just reveling in the majesty of it all and, and taking it in. And so after we leave him, we want to go down to that. We couldn't get into the Acropolis. It was past time, but we wanted to walk down. And there's an area there, the real touristy area called Plaka. And so we were like, let's go to Plaka, maybe do a little shopping, mm -hmm. pick up some souvenirs or whatnot. And uh, maybe get something to eat there. You know, now it's about eight o'clock. We left about three. Okay. So it's five hours. Excuse me. And we'd had a few snacks here. We didn't, right. we didn't really eat a full meal. And... We're at the restaurant and we just, we leave, we pay, and we we think this is what's hap what happened was that, you know, like I opened my wallet, and I for some for, mistakenly I had about fifteen hundred dollars oh. in euros and five hundred in cash. I had about two thousand twenty five hundred. I don't know exactly how much in in dollars that I had, uh, but more than five hundred somewhere around there. But I had about two thousand, maybe a little more. And I opened my wallet up and I pulled out, mm, I don't know, 10 or 20. I don't even remember, to be honest, but I am certain they saw that. And um, as we're leaving the restaurant, the police approach us. And Greek, I don't know if uh, you're familiar with the term, but they will say something. Someone will give this uh, colloquialism, if you will. They'll say, I don't know, he was speaking Greek. And the reason that makes uh, has meaning to me now is because there is no root language for me in with speaking English and from Greek, from the Greek language. So if you were to speak Italian, mm -hmm. Spanish is very, right. very similar. Right. And English and Spanish words. So I can find it. I can, I kind of understand it. Greek, there's no root language for me to, to jump off of and right. go, oh, that's what water, right. that's the word for water. Right. It doesn't trickle down from Greece right. or Greek like it does Latin to English. Gotcha. So when they said, you know, they're speaking Greek, mm -hmm. you they, don't know what they're saying. Right. Huge, huge uh, communication barrier. And so as we're leaving, the police come up to us and they say, we vi uh, violated a noise ordinance. And I said, well, where's it posted? Well, they didn't appreciate that at no. all because you don't have civil liberties. And it was what time you think? Eight, nine? Yeah, it's about eight or nine, something like that. And uh, Oh, yeah, they don't have civil. They're not like us. Well, I mean... My civil liberties do not apply right, there. Right, right. And so that, that was a lesson for me. Mm. And then um, they, didn't, they didn't like that. And then I said, okay, how loud were we when we violated the noise ordinance? It obviously has something to do with how loud, it, mm. how loud were we? Do you know? They didn't like that either. And so they said, we had to pay a fine. It's no big deal. We just had to pay a fine. And I said, you know, we're looking at each other like this. I'm, I'm going bro, this is a scam. Like, they're, <laughs> what do we do? And so we said, all right, let's just pay them and be done, you know, get this over with. So we reach in and they go, no, 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 you can't, you can't pay here. We got to go down to the station and, uh, and pay. And so okay. again, we're looking at each other and I'm like, this feels scammy real bad. What do we do? Well, they separated us right there. And I really got, excuse me, got concerned and then as soon as they put me, they, they had two cars, three cops, and one cop gets in the front car, puts me in the car, and he gets in. And when he gets in, the doors open up on either side, and two guys from the restaurant that we oh. were at jump in, box me in on either side, and my friend's in the, in the car behind us. This is day one, right? This is 
Eight o'clock, day one. Day one. Yeah, we got. We flew in about noon when we landed, eleven noon, mm-hmm. something like that. So we've been. We're just day one. We're, we're in a cop car <laughs> for a noise ordinance violation. It's ain't looking good at Plaka in the in the tourist area. Yeah. Right. And uh, so they get in and they start whacking on me. Now I can't see Chad behind me, but he can see that. They took off. I took off in the car, and he's still there. There's two cops in the front seat, and he's in the back seat. And he saw the guys get in, and he saw the car zip off. They were hitting you? Yeah, they came in hard oh, but okay. fast. For a noise ordinance? For a noise ordinance. Violent. Well, that's why I'm saying I right, think that right. the issue was that I opened up my wallet, and they Goodness. saw in there, and they were like, hey, we got two rich Americans, which rich isn't at all. But yeah. But for, for Greece, what I found out later was that Greece has been in like a two decades long depression, not a recession, like the 1920s, we yeah. think of depression, kind of that. So economically, oh. that's why it looked like Mogadishu. They don't have money to fix that stuff. Oh, goodness. So and there you are with a pocket full of money. Mm-hmm. Both of us. But mm. yeah, I was flashing around foolishly. And so they called the cops and, and that, that was that. And my friend, immediately Chad starts calls his wife and says, start tracking me. Something is really going on. And they can speak a little bit of English. That's how we knew it was a noise ordinance violation. And he's saying, hey, what's going on? Uh, just let me, I'm going to jump out if you guys don't, you know, whatever. And so he actually does. He waits till they get into a corner and he flies out of the car and they slam on the brakes and he does his, mm-hmm. he called it a ninja roll. And then he was like Barry Sanders. And he said he'd tuck down this alley and then go that and that way and that. And he was like, Oh, my goodness. He terrified. He was said he was just absolutely terrified. And uh, with me, they got in, and it just kind of goes black from there, and I have flashes. And what I remember is them beating the hell out of me, and this one guy on this side hitting me in the rib so hard that it was like, all right, I'm done playing. It's like my little brother and I when we're getting a fight, and, right. and then I get mad. And I hit him as hard as I could with my elbow, and I thought I killed him. I mean, I just went, all rules are off. This right. is not fun That's right. anymore. That's right. And I hit him. I thought I killed him. Didn't even stop him. <laughs> just kept going. I was like, oh, my gosh. And so I was, you know, pushing against him, trying to hold him, but they were just beating up on me. Mm. And then I didn't remember this at first, but over the year and a half that it's happened, I remember that— um, they were trying to get me out of the car after I bashed him in the face. They were trying to get me out of the car, and I was, you know, sticking my feet, and they couldn't get me. And so the cop gets out from the front seat and whacks me in the head with uh, with his baton or his stick. I, you know, I don't know what it was. I would assume a baton, but ha- hits me in the head, and that's what gets me out of the car. And as I regain my, you know, sort of the cognizance again, I realize they're trying to throw me off of this bridge here. And so I'm ducking, dropping, and and getting leverage, and then the other guy gets me, and they and I switch my leverage, and so the kid didn't really. I don't know. Them. I don't know how you're fighting back when they're beating you like that with a club and everything else. You're awesome. Don't say that. I'm I'm prone to flattery, and <laughs> I don't. I, I mean, I'm serious. I mean, I hear I, you. And a lot of people said you're tough, and I'm, right. as soon as I believe that, somebody's going to come beat me up. All right, I'm well, not I'll take I'll take it back. But I'm just saying, I <laughs> could have done I mean? what you did. Thanks, I appreciate it. Goodness uh, gracious, there's you got a lot people. more. Um, Stories of of heroism that, you know, I don't really see myself as anything other than a better person than I was when they started, which right. is bizarre. Right, but I'm just saying that, you me. know, I don't know how you were able to fight back. I mean, it sounds like you had three or four people whooping on you. I had three. And you were you were still there enough to f- somehow fight back? Yeah. Uh, well, it's almost over because as they were doing that— uh, I would, like I said, I dropped down on my knee and they're, they've got me backwards and I've got pictures. I've got it on my phone. I'll share it with you. Anything you want. Yeah. Uh, but you can see this abrasion, like but my butt crack, but on the lowest part where they were, where they pushed me over the bridge. But how they did it was the cop finally walked up again and whacked me. And you can see, see that scar that scar. Now I put religiously, I put, um, vitamin E oil on it and it looks fantastic compared to what it looked like. It was the. Right gnarliest Frankenstein scar just straight across my forehead and just bright, terrible red. And they stitched it up with like horse sutures. It was just, just unbelievable. But anyway, he whacked me across the head, split me open and they threw me and he grabbed my leg, which gave them the leverage Mm -hmm. and they got me. And I was like, Oh my, 
oh my God, they got me. And they threw me over. And I, I didn't know what was beneath me. I didn't know anything. I right. just knew I was going over. Over. And I've said this a couple of times that it seemed to me afterwards looking at this the millionth time, um, everything I did up until that point in my whole life, I think prepared me mm. for this moment. And look, what'd you do? So <laughs> I need to do it too. When, well, when I was young, I wanted to learn how to do a, a flip on a trampoline. And so I joined gymnastics, not because I wanted to compete in gymnastics. I didn't care about that. I just wanted to learn how to do a flip on a trampoline and learning how to do that led me to learn how to do it on the ground. And so then in high school, I played football and I would do a backflip after I scored a touchdown in the end zone. And I did it in college. And so my whole life up to about, I don't know, what am I, 50 Last 20 years, I wouldn't say I've done many at all <laughs> or even tried. But, you know, up to that point, it wasn't a big deal for me to do a round off back tuck or a round off back flip, whatever. Wow. And do it off of cliffs and stuff like that into swimming holes. Well, when they threw me off, I didn't know what I was landing in. I just knew I couldn't land on my head. Mm -hmm. I didn't know. So I had to do a certain kind of flip where I went over, tucked, rotated, and then kind of laid out so that I didn't over rotate. And uh, uh, they threw me off of a 25-foot pedestrian bridge that was on a road. So I didn't land in water. I ran it on a uh, highway <laughs> below. But I landed it. I landed on my feet. And when I hit, it uh, compound fractured my left femur right here. You can see mm. the scar. And I put uh, vitamin E oil on that religiously, too. And that absolutely looks fantastic. I know to you. I don't know if the camera can even see that, but... That is absolutely just beautiful to me. Compared to what Compared it was, sure. to what it looked like. So goodness. But yeah, so you can see it broke out. The the femur shattered from like right here to right there. It was just shattered. But it popped out, you know, right here. I broke hundreds, let's say hundreds of fractures, breaks, and micro fractures in both ankles and feet. Twenty five foot down. Yeah. And you landed on your feet. I landed on my feet. This exploded, and I think I went straight down because the elbow, it was weird. I had a split where I think I, that's where I elbowed the guy. Bam! And split my elbow open because I hit him hard. Mm -hmm. But then I broke my elbow on the fall, so I think that's what hit. So I had two wounds. but the So I broke this elbow, dislocated both collarbones, and tore this rotator cuff. And so wrecked, to say the least. And my buddy, Chad, mm -hmm. flash forward, and then I'll flash back. But he goes, when I went to the police station, uh, they said, we don't know, uh, we don't have your friend in po possession, because, uh, but we do have an American that tried to commit suicide. And he shows him this picture, and it's of me after the fall. And I'm just laid there, and he said, there was blood coming out of your head. And he said, you just look like this, you know, dead. And he said, there's a pool of blood, excuse me, around your leg. And uh, he said he freaked out and started screaming and tried to run out of there and it got real sketchy, but, but I'll come back to that. So anyway, I lay there for, I don't know, 45 minutes Goodness. or 30. I almost bled to death. Right. They said it nicked a, an artery or, a, you know, I don't know exactly what was going on, but I almost bled out. So it's at nighttime still, right? Yeah. Now it's probably, I don't know, that was about eight at the restaurant. Right. So it's probably... 10, yeah. 11, something like that. Nobody's going across that road? Yeah. That could save you? Yeah, that, I think we think that's what happened is somebody called in and said, there's a dead body on the road, and the ambulance went out. Because at first they said, well, the ambulance found you. And I was like, ambulance don't roll around looking for bodies off of, of a bridge. You know, they get a call and go to the right. spot. They don't drive around. So we think somebody probably called it in. But there was a picture out there. Right, apparently. The apparently. Showed it to Chad. And uh, so anyway, I wake up in the hospital and I'm still fighting, you know, like I, I wake up from it right. and they're trying to hold me down and, and treat me. But, but in my mind, I'm still right. in the battle. And so I was going, can I say cuss words? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I was going, get the fuck off of me. Right. And they're trying to help me. And uh, goodness gracious. Finally, yeah, they settled. No, I didn't know. You know, nobody's speaking English. So right. You I don't, don't even, know. No. I was like, get screaming. Yeah. Just going and, crazy. And the friendly restaurant and police just attacked you, so you don't know who to trust. Nobody. Right. Nobody. Right. And then somebody mumbles out in English, you've had an accident and you've broken your leg. It's a compound fracture. And I kind of look. I went. 
And I just remember going, oh, right. God, this is bad. And so I pass out. Mm-hmm. And then I wake up sometime later. I don't know what time it was or whatever. And um, I'm cathetered, but I didn't know it. And I was like, bro, sir, ma'am, I've got to pee. i got to pee. And I hear my buddy Chad go, just pee. You're good. And I look over and he's there. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And we're, we almost started talking. But I was like, I got to pee. I got to pee. And it was just a funny story that we tell. But. Finally, they were like, just pee on yourself, bro. You're cathed. And I, I just wasn't understanding right. that. And I was like, I'm going to pee on myself. Right. They were telling me to do that. But anyway, it's just a funny story. I bet it was a little bit of relief seeing your buddy there, though. You felt better because you kind of, you had to have some type of relaxation a little bit. Oh, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. And so then I peed and I go, he goes, do you remember what happened? And I was like, no. And he goes, it was the cops, bro. It was the cops. And I was like, oh, oh, Yeah. Because I had, you know, I'd sort of forgotten all of that. Right. And I've lost some time in here where I was knocked out and. Yeah, you're on the road at least an hour, I'm, I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, we kind of tried to work out the timeline. And, yeah, it was, it was over an hour the whole time between being taken and being being put into the hospital. It was about okay. two hours probably. That's maybe. what I was thinking. Yeah. And um, we get in the hospital. And, again, it's Mogadishu. So this is like uh, not anything we have here. Right. This is third world. And right. I'm not exaggerating. When they put me in the room, there were five people in there with me. All of us had compound injuries. So the guy next to me was a school teacher. Uh, Mi- uh, alias Mikolos was his, is his name. Mm-hmm. He's my guardian angel. Uh, he could speak English. He was my translator. I oh, mean, good. I mean, my guardian angel. All I right. mean that. Uh, <laughs> Again, I'll get emotional. It's not because I'm sad. It's because yeah. he was my guardian angel. <laughs> what would I do without him? You know what I mean? I've got one right okay. here. It's just... Mm. Sorry. You're okay. Um, You're okay. So, Alias is my translator, but he is a high school gym teacher and uh, at, in Greece there. And they're so poor that a volleyball... Somehow, I don't quite understand the situation, but went up behind the bleachers and they can't afford volleyballs. So he couldn't afford to leave it up there. So he had to precariously scramble up something, got the volleyball for his class. And then on his way down, he he jumps off and some piece of wood breaks and he compound fractures his ankle. Just blows out his. Mm. He was next to me and it was leaky and very, very painful and. Uh, so what was the room like? Was there like curtain dividers between y'all? No, it's no. It's all no. open? It's uh, maybe from that window to this wall like this, about this big. Mm-hmm. And there's one, two, excuse me, three, one, two beds. Wow. And, well, I'll get to it, but nothing on the wall, no air conditioning, no oh. monitors, no TVs, no, no, you know, something that you're plugged in that it's right. checked. Just a room with there, a window open. And there was a pigeon that would come in there. And shit mm, every day, <laughs> so there weren't there weren't much about you know compound fractures. We got open wounds here, and right. there's a pigeon. Yeah, right there, just you know. Oh, and the guy across from me, his his daughter wiped my butt and made me cry like a baby for that generosity, that kindness. Right, right. It's like I was three days in the hospital and hadn't crapped, and I said I've got to use the bathroom, and they just said go. They didn't have a bedpan. What were they doing? I mean, just holding you? Well, first, no. No, I was just in my bed. They, there were no nurses. The That's people, what I'm saying. The I people mean, in the room were saying, um, just just go, go, and they'll clean it up. And finally, it just got so bad that right. I, I said, okay, I did it. It was, A, disgusting. And then the nurses came in. And because they thought I was a suicide, that's what the police reported. Mm. They reported that this was a suicide. Of course. And so I come into this hospital and everybody thinks I tried to kill myself. Well, they were giving me attitude. And so I come, I'd crapped myself now mm. on purpose, but right. I'd crapped myself. No other choice. <laughs> and these nurses come in and this abrasion that I got on my back where they threw me over the bridge, it's stuck to the sheet. Mm. It's stuck. And they raised me up. And first of all, they go... And they're just like in Greek cussing me or yelling. Mm-hmm. It, I don't know what they're saying, but they are upset about it. Mm-hmm. And then yank me up and whipping me around to clean this nastiness up. And I was like, 
oh my God, I would call my wife, go, they're going to kill me. They're going to kill me. I swear to God, they're still trying to kill us. And so flashback, I'm with Chad. We're in the hospital. He says, it's the, the police that did it. So we call the embassy and we tell him it was the police. And the guy at the embassy, I've got his name in there, but he said, okay, all right, listen, don't say anything else. Don't tell another person the story. No one, your life depends on it. The police are corrupt and they're in league with the Albanian mafia. Oh. And Chad and I looked at each other. Okay, now sidebar. Now, Chad, you got to think of it from his perspective, which I didn't. I was cold, fully compel, uh, encompassed in my own pain. Mm -hmm. And how the hell are we going to get out of here? But he can't leave me. I said, don't leave me, dude. Do not leave me here. He goes, I'm not leaving without you. But the cops didn't kill me. And then he got away, but, and he saw them. And now there's an attempted murder out there, mm -hmm. and we had no their faces. And they say mafia, Albanian mafia. We immediately, everyone says, oh, have you seen that movie Taken? Yeah. Well, is it similar? No, I mean, I don't know. I, no, it's not similar. My story is not similar to that movie right. other than Albanian mafia were right. involved. <laughs> right. And I don't know if that was the mafia. It was the cops. But so I've got a question. Leagues. So yeah. where's your daughter during all this? She's in Rome. She had no idea. Mm -mm. Oh, my goodness. No, and we kept it from her. Like, yeah. all, everybody back home says, don't tell her she's going to try to go. And she right. knew something. And she finally called Mandy and, and my wife and, and was like, I know something's going on. And she told her straight up what's going but don't go there. Right, don't. Stay where you're at. Yeah. You're safe. So your buddy was there with you the whole time? Yeah, he Good. stayed with me. Good. But what I was going to say is yeah. when when we flew, when we finally got home, and it's a long, but we spent a week in the hospital. I spent a week in the hospital. He'd come to see me. He stayed the night with my wife, and they just got a, a room with red eye, and they, they, shared, they didn't share a bed, but they shared a room. Right. And she said he woke up about three or four times with night she said he was screaming as loud as he probably could, just going, ah! And I thought, oh, Chad was terrified. Right. <laughs> so was I. Right. And uh, Chad was being a numb nut one day, and he's trying to get us the plane tickets out of there. And I can't get out of there. It is a nightmare that's just a whole nightmare. But he's got his phone, and he's stepped out of this big room to talk on the phone, and he sets it on the windowsill out in the hall out there, comes in here and says, you know, it's going to be five grand or something. And I said, pay for it. Get, my, get me out of here. Right. And he goes back and they, they steal his phone. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. Or the bird pigeon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was outside of the room. The okay. pigeon got to stay in there with us. Oh, now I get it. Now I get it. <laughs> yeah, it was a pigeon in that stole room. Stole his phone. And nobody came from the police department. Nobody came to question me about a suicide mm -hmm. or question. That's illegal. Right. To kill yourself, that's illegal. And if you fail... That's, that's what I was saying. But my deal is they didn't question you because they knew better. Mm -hmm. So that's they didn't why. show up. But with Chad, with his phone, he lost his phone. They showed up twice. And Alias, my room dog here, was dog cussing somebody about stealing it. And they know it. And mm -hmm. I couldn't hear what was going on. But they got mad. And then the cops came. And I'm sitting there. And I've got my airplane visor on, whatever you call those little cover-up when you're sleeping on a plane. And I hear a noise. And I kind of just look under it. And I can see looks like a uniform and I raise up and I, my eyes focus and it's these two policemen and one of them's going like this, just looking at me. Now, I don't know if it's my imagination or if I've blended the people in the back seat of the car. I don't know. But when he looked at me, mm -hmm. I recognized him and I went right like this. And then I just was like watching my, cause I they did have me on a, on a IV drip. Mm -hmm. They were terribly, first I thought I was guy, then certain I was going to lose my leg, all, all this stuff. But I was on a drip and a blood clot machine. That was the only technology they had. And everyone I talked to says, I'm surprised they had one of those blood clot machines. That's, they were poor with everything else, but they had that. So that was a nice thing. But I just knew somebody, he was going to come up. And so after that, that night, it's like night three or four. I was there for a week, night three or four. You have to understand that in Greece, they're so poor, they don't have a 24-hour shift. So they've got from about, um, I think, probably 6.30 in the morning, maybe 6, 6.30 when they would come to get me or wake me up, till about 9 at night. And then it's ghost shift. And it's only people 
for an emergency situation or something, but you don't have people coming in and checking your, right. let me see. Okay. You look good. Let me, I'll bring your meds. By the way, they don't do pain meds. So you were Greece. there, you were there completely unattended, if you will, with no pain meds with yeah. honestly less than third world care. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Um, but it's, it's late. It's after the night shift and two nurses come to the room and they say they need to take me to get x-rayed. And it's, it's, it's graveyard shift. And I was like, hmm, that's weird. But they take me and the caster on my bed, I stayed in the same bed the whole time. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was weird. But the caster on my bed was, you know, doing that. And it would pull to the left. And these girls, these two ladies are taking me to the x-ray. And they had to stop, I don't know, five times because it was just so hard to keep the... And that's what kind of piece of crap I was on. I was just illustrating that everything was just broken. So we get to the x-ray room. Now, remember, I, this whole arm is in a, it's stitched up. It's bandaged up. This is broken. This, right. they popped them all back in. But, I, you know, I can't hardly do anything. Right, right. Leg is splayed out. And they have a thing. I'll show you a picture. They call it a stabilizer. But you can see, well, I put vitamin E on these two. But up here, see these three little yeah, the, yeah. There's three on my shin bone somewhere right in there. But. Uh, they have them drilled into my bone and this big thing out here, and it's supposed to stabilize right. this, you know, this jigsaw puzzle of a femur. Right. And it didn't stabilize anything. But, but, you know, I got that, so I can't move that. This ankle and everything, like I said, broken in both bone, both uh, feet and mm -hmm. ankles. So I'm, I'm ruined. I'm wrecked. And they take me down there, and the, the x-ray machine is sitting on the table. Do you know what I mean? No. Well, they take an x-ray machine, say this is the, you know, they're x-raying this. They'll take their little x-ray thing. They'll go. Arr, arr, arr. Oh, <laughs> I hadn't seen one of those. <laughs> well, this was all the way down on the table. And they said, okay, you hold it up. And then they oh, scooted me it. over. You hold it. Yeah. And I'm broken as How? hell. And How? I'm lifting up this x-ray machine so that they can scooch me under it. And they're like, okay. And they got me settled. And one of them holds it and one of them go takes a picture. And then they never turned out. But I was thinking, this is it. Mm. This is where they're going to, you know, something happened. Right. Because it's graveyard shift and this right. broken ass x-ray. I was like, right. this is it. And I was ready. I didn't know what I had, but I was going to hurt somebody. Mm -hmm. You know, I was going to, I didn't have anything, but I was at least going to try to punch them real hard. Wow. Maybe backhand with this hand. And I'll show you my pictures of all my wounds. Oh, I just had man. bruises and everything, but they didn't try to kill me then. But I just knew that's what was going on. They were taking me down into the dungeon. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought you was going at when you said they come to get you for the x-rays. I was like, I oh, thought. they're going to try another stunt. That is what I thought because, you know, we, we survived it. Oh. Chad's night terrors. So I didn't have a shower the whole time. Right. Getting a medical release was the big key. I've got a, a friend of mine that, that has been fortunate in business, and he's got s sufficient means. And I called him or I texted him. I can't remember because I was, I was, you know, I had head trauma. And uh, I said, I saved your life when we were in high school, you son of a bitch. You owe me your life. And I did save his life. And he goes, I would come get you myself. But if they won't release you, we're just wasting time and money. Oh, my goodness. And you can't get a release. What do you mean, like, they won't release? you talking about the, the little hospital you're in wouldn't release you? Well, yeah, I didn't have medical clearance to fly ah. because of blood clots. Ah. And so I was stuck there. And we were trying to get a medical flight, and they were like, it's going to be $200,000, and we can have it there in three weeks. And it was just all this stuff. So my friend, the only option we have is there's a one-way ticket on Monday. This happened on Tuesday night, so Wednesday morning. But Tuesday, on Monday, there's a flight. So we're, we're doing this coming around to Monday. So almost a week. I said a week, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everything just has to line up perfectly if it doesn't. I'm stuck here for another week, and I will die. Mm. I'm in, I'm infected. I'm septic. Yeah, they're not feeding me. My right. my dinner, my lunch, and my breakfast was a cup of hot tea with a piece of toast on top of it. And this guy over here, alias, is getting ham and hard boiled eggs. Yeah, but you you weren't supposed to be there. I, I think that's what they were doing. I mean, I don't think they were like, you can't eat because it's bad right. for your leg right. Right. or some nonsense. Yeah. 
So, you know, I don't know. It, it, there was no, like I said, no pain pills. It was no, no way to use the bathroom. The next time I, uh, I used the bathroom in a bedpan and the guy across the hall there, his daughter came and wiped my butt. I mentioned it earlier. Right. Most humiliating. Yeah. You don't have much modesty right. after a strange woman that is caring for her own father wipes your butt. I don't know how to tell you other than it just takes you to the base level of, of existence. And that's where I was. And I was calling my wife going, you've got to get me out of here. You've got to get right. me out of here. And so the, we figured out that the only way we could do it, because I couldn't get off of the plane and back on, it had to be a one-way flight, direct flight from Greece right. to the United States. I yeah, couldn't no. stop in Paris right. and get off, get on. Oh. So we had to buy a first-class ticket, and he, he got coached. There was only one first class, or maybe he'd have been with me. I don't know, but we only had one, and, but he could get on the plane. So Good. we said, book it. It cost five grand, and my mom, my mom said, please let me pay for that. It was just so important for her to, to be there for me. I didn't really need it, but it was just really touching mm -hmm. that she was uh, just a lot of kindness came out during this whole thing. So anyway, we get on it, and no, we don't get on it. We book the tickets. I'm suffering, and I pay a nurse uh, $20 American, which I don't know what the exchange rate was. It was a lot. The oh, dollar yeah. was worth more. I think they were on the Greek lira or something. It wasn't the Italian lira, or it may have been the euro, but we were the exchange rate was better for the dollar. We were on the positive side of it. But anyway, I paid her to give me a sponge bath, and she rigged up this trash can and had this all. And then she poured water over my head and not a trash can, a trash bag. And it was hold this and hold that and had me sitting in this bed with broken everything. And she said, oh, we're just going to pour water. This isn't the nurse. This is the nurse after hours that I had to pay. Mm -hmm. And she pours the water over my head to give me a sponge bath. And it just goes all over me. I mean, right. I was like, whatever. But she sponged me off a little bit. But I had been a week without a shower or anything. I stunk. Right. I'd crapped in the bed twice now. Right. right. Uh, and we're getting on the plane tomorrow. And everything has to line up just like so. Right. Or it's going to be another week. Like, I'm going to miss this flight. We're, it's going to have to be next Monday. That terrifies me for every, every possible reason. Right. So we can't get the release. We have to leave by a certain time. We're in Athens in the airport. It's about an hour away. And... I have to go by ambulance. And uh, I got a bill for that, by the way, for $5,000 that I still hadn't paid. I wonder if they can put me in collections. <laughs> yeah, yeah, kidding. they're not getting that. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't pay it. I tried to claim it on my, uh, my air pain, air, oh. air, air, you know, I had ticket insurance or whatever, travel. That's a scam. Don't ever buy that stuff. Oh, okay. I was wondering about that. Scammy, scam, scam. Ugh. And there's no recourse. It's not like you go, well, who, who do I appeal? What higher court do I appeal this insurance denial to? Right. Nothing. I mean, what you, about you the embassy? Them. The embassy was no help? That uh, Embassies are not there to be tourist uh, helpers or whatever. Their, their relations are with the United States government and the government of Greece. And, you know, if they can help with some problem with an American that's there, but that's not their, they're not there to babysit. They're not oh. there to help us. That's not what the role is. I had no idea. I didn't either. I, I thought they would help. I thought they were sending the cavalry. Yeah, you know. I thought I'd call the embassy and they'd say, I'm sending the the wolf. And I was like, shh, that's all you had to say. No, he didn't show up. He, he said, be quiet. He said, get out of town any way you can. So, and all this stuff's trying to line up. I don't have my medical release. Now it's 10 o'clock. We need to leave. He's got to be there an hour, two hours earlier. It takes right. an hour to get there. Flight leaves at one. Right. And this timing, now I am starting to freak out. I right. freak out. And about 1030, we should already be leaving. They come in and start cleaning everything up on me. So it, the wheels are in motion. 11 o'clock, they're, they're rolling sad. I say goodbye to my room dog, who I still talk to. Good. By the way. Good. Yeah. Um, I don't know any of these other people. And he said he didn't like this guy over here. They were um, Lebanese. No. I don't know. He said there were Muslims, and Muslims is a problem in a Christian country, not because we don't like Muslims, but their value systems are different. Right, right. And so trying to blend them is a terrible thing for Greece, is what he was saying. So he didn't like them, and he didn't trust them over there. By the way, everybody's family member stayed 
in the room. So there were oh, 10 people. Right. Well, in, in his room. Five beds. But he had his wife, Ruritza, and then this old man over here who I think died. And then they brought in another guy. He had somebody. He had his daughter who uh, wiped my bottom. And then he had two or three guys that would come and go at all the time. Oh but there was always, you know, it was unbelievable. Hot. I had Chad go buy me a fan. Oh, my goodness. And Alias told me to turn it off because it'll give you pneumonias. I was like, oh, God. So not to cause any fight, I turned it off, and somebody stole it, actually. Of course. <laughs> so I Did swear you to God. Find, the phone was gone, too, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, never, never, nothing, nothing. But um, so then I said, all right, Chad, go to the car and wait for him to bring me down to the ambulance. Now that the clock is ticking, mm -hmm. and I am stress level just through the roof, and he said, all right, so he grabs bag, and and I've, I'm cathetered, and I'm still in the stabilizer and everything, but I'm ready to go. Clock's ticking, then it'll come. Then finally, they take me down to the ambulance. I call Chad, and I go, all right, I'm here. They need the paperwork that I gave you. Where you at? And he goes, you mean I'm following the wrong ambulance? Oh, no. And I go, uh. I'm sitting right here. They just now brought me out and stuck me in the ambulance. If you're following somebody, yeah. He goes, you know, cuss word. And he goes, right. all right, hang on. I'm on the way. He was 10 minutes out. Oh, so it took another God. 10 minutes. Then he gets their hands on the paperwork. And I'm just like, give me all my paperwork. Give me everything. Give me my luggage. I was like, give me everything. Like, he's clearly not thinking, you know, he's stressed. Right, he right. probably hadn't slept all week. So oh, my goodness. I'm not making fun of him. It's yeah, just, I'm still, I'm still thinking this is, this is a week. Yeah. So I'm going on a week right now. Yeah, he had to move out of our Airbnb like day three or four. Yeah, we're going to stay four, three days, four days, three nights, four days, whatever it was. So halfway through, he had to go get a hotel room somewhere else. And the whole time he's thinking they're, they know where we are. And right. Watching his back. Yeah. So we get to the airport, and this lady greets us right there as they drop me out of the ambulance and basically salute me and say, have a good one. They just dropped me off there. She goes, um... You're going to, I don't think we can let you on the plane. Now, we have been in negotiations, mm -hmm. talking to the airlines. My wife has, I mean, just, she needs to tell her story. Chad needs to tell his story. There's a guy in Oklahoma City that called the embassy in Washington, D.C., that called the embassy in uh, Greece, and then started in Russellville. So, it, like, Russellville, Arkansas, it went. Oh, wow. This combination of All crazy in a people. week, that's, that's good. Yeah, so... We get there and they go, we can't, we can't let you on the plane. And I go, what are you talking about? We've, <laughs> we've talked about this. We got the tickets. We're good to go. Right. And she said, well, you have to, you know, bend your leg on takeoff and landing. Can you do that? And I said, absolutely, I'll do that. She goes, can you show me? And I, and I just got mad. I said, hell no. You get two takeoff and landing. That's it. And I'm going to break this some bitch for, for takeoff right. and for landing. I don't care because we're going to be in America. So I was like, right. really, you're going to get one. And she said, let me go get my manager. And I was just going, oh, God, I'm stuck here. You had and, no time. And I, yeah, I was telling Chad, I was like, do not take me back to that hospital. Right. Let's go somewhere else. Uh, maybe we get on a, a flight to Italy. And, you know, but then I'm immobilized in a wheelchair. And it's not my wheelchair. Oh, oh. It's just a so this lady comes out. I still have her business card. I sent her an email thinking I didn't, I didn't have anybody to send it to to do it. But she saved my life. She goes, Mom, 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 I talked to Mandy, your wife. I got you. Let's go. She didn't say you got to bend your leg. And she gets me. Crap. And she takes me straight to the front of the line at um, customs. And Chad's dragging all our stuff along with him. But he gets to come up there, too. And we go straight to the front of the line. Excuse me. And so I'm sitting there laid out, stank nasty, except mm -hmm. for she gave me kind of a shower down my back. Right. Stanky, nasty, dirty. And some ass clown goes, what happened? Yeah. And he was actually on this side of me, but I, I was like, broke my leg. <laughs> Noise ordinance. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say I mean, that. You know, I mean, you can laugh now. But no. You can't, you know. No, not. Oh, you mean today? Today, today. Yes, yes, yes. 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 And I said, uh, he goes, what happened? I said, uh, rock climbing. And he goes, you think that was a good idea now? And I was just going. You have no idea. You have no idea. And I go, it was a terrible idea. Yeah. And that's it. You know, I didn't say anything. I didn't say a single word to anybody about anything until we touched the ground in Atlanta. But oh. that lady moved us to the front of the line, moved us straight to the hangar, moved us right into the plane, 
put me in first class. It took four or five people to get me in and out of there because I bet. Well, somebody had to hold this. Oh you know, my goodness. And my ankles are jacked, all right. jacked up. And I got to basically do a one legged squat and then stick my leg in this tunnel thing. Right. And then lay down. And then first class is very, very luxurious. But I was cathed and uh, we were worried about blood clots. So mm -hmm. I couldn't drink and I didn't want to eat. I didn't want to have to use the bathroom or anything. So How long of a flight was it? 13 hours. And it was so uncomfortable. You wouldn't even believe it. Every. Every second, my heartbeat, every throb, every beat of my heart shot down my leg as a pain, right? And so I, I, um, I got a flashback. I got to tell you, my, my rich buddy that wouldn't send me the plane or pay for it because I saved his life. I was trying to claim my, I yeah. saved your life. He said, here's what I can do for you. He said, in Vietnam, there were... People that lived and people that died. How do you live in Vietnam prison camp for 20 years? How do you do that? And he said, those people learned how to make every situation a positive situation. And he said, I don't know how you do it, Jeff, but if you can dig deep enough and find the positive of this, you'll survive it. If you don't, you'll probably die, Jeff. So find the positive, I, I didn't ever, I'd never heard that, I don't think, certainly not in that perspective, but then I had no idea how to apply it. And and since then, I've learned that it is, it's what I call, you know, I just had to come up with my own names for these things. I'm sure there's a philosophical, you know, treatise out there about this kind of thing, but you have to stay absolutely in the present, focused on the present. And as soon as your mind starts to, starts to wander backwards or forwards, you're doomed. You're doomed. Hmm. So so you you just have to stay in the immediate and make that I'm I'm going to just be positive. That's that's what I did. Goodness. There wasn't I didn't have a lesson. I don't even know what I'm doing. I just knew I couldn't be mad. So I had to forgive these guys that broke my leg and I had to do it right then hmm. in the hospital still in Athens. And that, I've never, I've never had to do anything like that in my life. I don't, had I not been able to let go, I think it had chewed me up. I think it would have killed, I think it would have been uh, the wound and not the broken bones. You know, these heal, had I not learned how to do that, I'd, I forgive you, my buddy, for doing something, but... I'll never forgive you for trying to kill me and wrecking my body and stealing my money. You're the, I want to kill you mm -hmm. is what I do. If you walked in here right now and that cop, if I saw him mm -hmm. and I had some backup, I would, but I didn't because somehow I, I let go. Of, all of this is above me. The, the patience or the positive attitude. This is not me. This is something that I, out of nowhere, and how I'll put it into my life. And the forgiveness thing. I'll forgive a friend that I love. It's, it's okay, man. I forgive you. And we'll go on. But I'd never been put in a situation where you had to wow. actually forgive somebody. That, for, tried to, that tried to kill you. Right. And so I not only forgave them, I prayed for them. And I said, I hope they get some money. Don't punish them. That's what they saw. They're that poor. So I actually had compassion for them. And so I gave them the money that they stole. So I didn't have to forgive them for that because I just gave them that. Mm -hmm. And then what they did to me, it, it took me really focusing on it, but it's not that hard. It's not that hard, especially when the goal is to stay positive. And again, this is not something I knew. I was just, I, I, he said, or you'll die like the POWs. If you don't learn how to take this and make it positive, you'll die. And he was just matter of fact. And I was like. I believe him. He's been, he is one of my other dear friends from childhood. Good. I have two from, from third grade. Oh, wow. Six years old. And wow. I'm 52 now. And we're, or they aren't good friends. Mm -hmm. I'm good friends with each of them. They're friendly, but they they're the middle person. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And, uh, you know, I love them bad. There's Brian Warner. If this ever makes it to anything, Chad Elric, you know, I love you guys. I have to give him a shout out. Yeah. Um, so, so that, that, that advice is actually, 
pretty priceless. <laughs> uh, not at the time, but I'm thinking right now, you know, oh. that, that's... Oh, yeah. Well, that's, that's good. Well, I'm on the airplane, okay? And again, each beat is throbbing. And so I have to figure out how to manage this 13-hour flight in excruciating pain and discomfort. And, and what would happen is I'd be sitting there, you know, you could lay back, but my butt would cramp or get mm, tired, mm -hmm. you know, because it's real easy to do this when there's nothing wrong with you. Right. But when you're laid up in a mobilized position, like Man, I, I was for a week, yeah. <laughs> when my to to rotate, I'd go all right, go five minutes, and I would count out five oh minutes. Oh my goodness! And I had TV on, but I was just in pain. I could not watch it, and I couldn't sleep. So I didn't have pain medicine. Goodness! And so I would count five minutes out, and then I'd go, ah! you know, just just oh my goodness. excruciated, just to scooch my butt just a little bit to get right. it off that pressure point. And I'd go, oh, and then immediately you could tell that the other one's coming, you know, like yeah. this new position is only going to last for about five minutes. So I oh did my goodness. 13 hours, 13 hours of that. in five minute increments. Oh, and, my goodness. And twice Chad came from the back up to first class and he would do an absolute monster human leg press. And, I, you know, this arm's still in a sling. but I On put, an airplane. Yeah. And, by the way, we're in first class, and these people right here, mm -hmm. I'm stanky. Mm -hmm. I am stanky. And they just paid five grand, ten grand, because they, they had two. They were a married couple. Oh, goodness. And I'm over there changing my catheter, mm -hmm. you know, trying to be quiet. I didn't even know if that was, like, against airline rules to right. change a, your pee bag in the middle of a cabin. Oh, but my I goodness. I couldn't go to the bathroom. Oh, my goodness. So that I wasn't drinking. I wasn't getting any of the food or any of the wine, all the perks. Right. And I was so uncomfortable that laying down wasn't a perk either. There were no perks. But if you can afford it, uh, first class was very nice <laughs> compared to coach. I don't know about that. <laughs> but um, That's a lot of money. He'd come and he'd do a leg press and stand me up and let me just stand there. And somebody would have to hold my leg just so I could stretch out. And I was just reach back and massaging my butt and moving my arm as much as I could, just trying to loosen everything up. And then they go, okay, here we go. And then we'd all have to uh, and sit back down for. Did those people seven ever say hours. anything in first class to you about um, them being uncomfortable? There were the no, good, not, not the people, good. the uh, stewardesses or whatever you call them, the airline attendants. Right. Super fantastic. Good. Some guy came up to me and he almost made me cry. He was just so kind. Good. I don't remember his name. He was he had an accent like Australian or something, mm -hmm. but it was uh, this was Delta, I believe. Yeah. Maybe American Airlines. I don't know. I've got. I don't have my car. I got her card in in my wallet. I'll always keep it in there. But right. Um, well, then we landed after thirteen hours of the person of positive attitude, mm. and then focusing on right now. In fact, it was every second. I was counting out five minute increments. Now, after I'd get to five, and I maybe move around or something. Maybe I'd turn on the TV or something. Mm. And then once it started throbbing or whatever I, you couldn't watch you couldn't do anything and so then i would again it's an immediate a focus on the on right now i i'd never had to do that in my whole life i've never had to do, i don't even know what that means other than this was the recipe that i used to survive wow. so for those five minutes i just was going to five i prayed a lot mm -hmm. say the rosary i'm catholic I'd, I'd said the rosary probably a thousand times on that in that week but um yeah, that, that, that 13 hour ride was the most brutal experience in mental and physical fortitude I had ever experienced. I mean, I just had to stay in it for 13 hours mm. grinding. I, I don't even know how to explain it. So we, we land and I don't even have to go through customs. Custom comes on the plane to get me. Uh, and then I, I bust out bawling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I felt, oh, my God. I was like, they tried to kill me. I was telling everybody, I was like, they tried to kill me. Get me home. And so we went into Atlanta. We picked that flight because my wife said there's a level one trauma center. And she was actually worried that I had head trauma in addition to obvious, you know, broken bones and whatnot. And there was a head trauma right across from Grady, which was the physical trauma. And um, also we had a friend in Russellville, uh, Seth Thornsbury and his sister, Amanda Thornsbury Wartburg or something like that. She's married to 
a doctor up there, that, and they are evidently balling out. But she did something and got me in. I don't know what. Good. But she got me in because when we got when we got off the airplane, they took me on the tarmac to the ambulance straight to Grady, and they put me in there, and they immediately shot me up with some drugs. I'm sure. Life changed. Yeah. And they said, we're going to send you home. Come back tomorrow. Wait, what? <laughs> that's what they said. I said, <laughs> I said, that's fine. That's fine. I'm home. And I called my wife. I said, they're sending me home. Let's just, but I was on drugs now. I was like, I'm home. I don't care. Mm -hmm. But Amanda called somebody and did something. They're, they're surgeons, neurosurgeon, her husband, some big wig. I mean, Good. Um, they got me. They, and so they go, oh, no, 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 no. We're. We're doing surgery right now. Mm -hmm. I'm about I, to say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I called and I said, no, they're, they're taking me in right now. And they got me on some good drugs. So you and Chad go sleep. Yeah. I'll let you know in the morning or call, whenever. Call, call you when I'm done. Yeah. And then it was an air conditioned hospital room. Uh, the nurse came in. I had a clicker. I had my own room, had a television, had a fan, had access to phone. Mm, night and day contrast. Everybody bitches about the medical cost. Go to Greece for a week, my friend, and mm. you won't. You'll be glad to pay a little extra for air conditioning, or right. you know, some of our a clean room. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, the guy across the street where the or the the room mm. where his daughter wiped my butt. He had some freak out incident, and he pulled his catheter out. Oh. All angry and violent, and it was like somebody skint a squirrel and threw it on the room. Well, they came and wiped it up, but it was, you know, it went like it's disinfected everything. That's horrible. No. Horrible. Oh, it's third world, I, you know. And I love Alias, and so I love the Greek people and some of kind. And some come to America. Right. Some people are pieces of crap right. here too. Right. So I'm not complaining, but they they're they've been in a depression for 20 years, and they Goodness. are just really a struggling country. So I really felt bad for him. But, yeah, I got all the amenities, and they thought they were going to have to take my leg. So oh. we're not out of the water yet. We just got home. So they thought I was going to die, and they're worried about blood clots. They thought I was going to die. Right. I saved. I survived that. No blood clots at 30,000 feet. I survived that somehow. I said, I don't care. You could kill me, God, in the air. Get me out of this hospital. I'll die in on the way. Right. But I was like, I'm leaving. And, I, you know, Chad and I still thought they were trying to kill us. Right. You mean, they certainly knew about us and where we were. They knew about me for sure. And Chad. They probably had eyes on him the whole time. He's terrified. So. Yeah, that's right. They uh, go in the first day, that first surgery. And when I wake up, there's my wife. Was, I don't know. I don't know the timeline at this point. <laughs> but they had taken all that garbage off mm -hmm. and they just had one stabilizer still plugged into the bone, but it was just one instead of 10. I can show you a picture here in a little bit if you want right. to look, but, um, and then they said, we got to go back in and really fix it. Right. And that'll be next day. So this is, that's the third sort of, I don't know about surgery, but where they opened me up and went inside me Oh my two goodness. in Greece, one now in Atlanta. And then this fourth one, they're going to fix it. And they said to me, and my wife, if there's um, any infection, mm -hmm. we're going to have to take the leg. We're going to pull it. Mm -hmm. Are you okay with that? And so we talked about it, and we yeah. have saved up some money. And we said, I said, I don't, I don't want to give it up. So I'm willing to give up everything we have, and, and we don't. our house is paid for. I was like, we'll, we'll mortgage the house. We'll, let's, but let's save it. She said, okay. I agree. And I was like, fantastic. Okay. All right. So we get in there to the surgery and the surgeon's there. And evidently he's some absolute young stud because he was about 30 years old. And he, everyone was saying, this is the guy. He is the guy Good. you want. And I was like, but just, I was just very impressed because, you know, here I'm 50 and to think, this guy's about to open me up and dissect and do all of this. And he's 30, like he's five years ago. He's 25. That's, that's <laughs> just baffling the, the right. magnanimous minds of some human beings. I'm impressed by it or certainly by his ability and whatnot. So anyway, he gets me in the operating room. We're, we're prepped and they're going to come in to put me under just a second. But he goes, you know, we talked about this, and I know you talked to your wife, so 
as long as we're you were you understand that if I go in there and there's an infection, we're pulling it. And I, we had talked about no, 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 no. Ex, ex, use all means necessary to save this son of a gun. Right. But right then and there, for some reason, I don't know. I just said okay, just do whatever. And he left the room, and I think I'm gonna get emotional. I'm sorry. I think that the first time in my whole life that I'd ever spoken to God, I don't mean one-on-one, I'm saying truly prayed, not just saying God be with me, which is talking to God, but I mean I really talked to him for the first time in my life, and what I said was this. I said, Father, I don't want you to take my leg. I do not want you to take it. But if you want it, I'm going to give it to you. You don't have to take it. I, I offer it up for nothing. Like, I'm no. giving it to you. You don't have to take it. But I don't want you to take it. Then we went in, and I don't, you know, and I was, I just kind of gave it to, to mm-hmm. him. Well, I have never done that in my mm-hmm. life. I'm sorry. I, and I'm a Christian, and I'm, I'd never been there. I'd never been up against that wall right. with God alone. My, no, you know, nobody was there. I was all alone going into possibly an amputee's world, which, okay, at least I'm alive. That's, I was like, if you want it, I'm going to give it to you. You don't even have to take it. It's yours. And I woke up out of surgery, and my oldest daughter was there with her husband, fiancé at the time, but her husband, John, whom I love dearly. Uh, and I couldn't feel my leg. Mm. And I was like, I couldn't mm. feel. And I was like, oh, my God. And I was like, is my leg, my leg's gone. And they were like, it's there, Dad. They saved it. I was like, well, I can't feel it. You know, they're like, you got drugs on you. Right. Oh, that would have been scary just to reach down just well, to I, see. I, I, I was tapping to see because I didn't want to grab a nub because mm. it was broken. Right. From there, so they were going to take it right here. Oh, goodness. Yeah, they're going to take it above that. I wasn't even oh. going to be a nub. I, I was even, thinking knee for some reason. Mm-mm. Oh, my goodness. Broke from here to here. And the infection, I was septic, right. by the way. Right. And um, flashback to when I was praying. Before that, I had told everybody, I would texted a thousand friends, um, man, if if you believe in God at all, I don't care what religion you are or nothing, I need you to specifically pray that the infection is gone. Because they said, if we open you up and the infection's in there, we're taking it. Mm -hmm. And I said, pray specifically for the infection in my leg to be gone. I beg God, you know, Mm -hmm. the the prayer, what do they call them? The prayer warriors. Yeah, prayer prayer warriors. Yeah. Everybody was praying and everybody said they were. And Mm -hmm. I have no idea at what situation or if it wasn't just accumulation of all of it. But it, it, it worked, and that was a miracle because I was septic. Mm-hmm. You know, if you have a sinus infection, they'll give you antibiotics. Mm-hmm. Maybe take a week. I had one day, and this was septic when I got here. They were scrubbing it, and they had cleaned it, but it was still infected. They took a culture of it at the same time they opened me up for the final surgery. Right. And that culture never grew. Not one bit of infection. Wow. So... Wow. Either it's a miracle or mm-hmm. what, that antibiotic they use, they should use on every single thing in the whole world because it's a hundred, it, it got rid of every trace of it. Yeah, I'm going to go with miracle. I, that's what people, I claim. And like I said, I'd never talked to God this way. I'd never given it up strong like that. Like just Ooh. give it up. Yeah, it's, it's easy to say for someone like me to say, you know, yeah, I could do that. But when your back's against the wall, like you're talking about, that's a different story. Yeah. When you're there. Yeah. And I thanked everybody. And again, I'm Catholic, and a lot of people are Protestant. They think that, you know, I love God, and you love God, and, you know, God bless. That's all I can say. But thank you for your prayers. And it doesn't matter where it came from. It it got answered. Right. And everybody that was involved, I give credit to. And so, yeah, now I'm on the road to recovery. But that's all small potatoes because I'm going home. My dad, by the way, drove in with my brother and sister and— they caravanned my wife. She drove in by herself. She was going to fly. And then, because I was like, no, we'll just rent a car and drive home. And I had all, I was going to get us home. I didn't have any idea we were going to go to Grady and have two surgeries and be there for a week. Right. 
So my dad drives all the way here with my sister and brother, and they caravan my wife back, helping me mm -hmm. in the backseat of the car. Mm -hmm. Who would have known had he not done that? It would have been terribly difficult, terribly difficult. It took two people to get me in and out of the car. One right. person holding my leg, one person on the other side pulling me, and then you had to stack the pillows just right. Oh, my and We're goodness. strapping it in. But we drove home, my dad leading the way. We got home, and I was home two days before I was supposed to be. Man. From our trip. Oh, wow. You were, yeah, this whole thing has been accumulating time. Yeah. So I, oh, I get back two days for before I'm supposed to be back from the trip. Oh, my goodness. But it's uh, October. It's my wife's birthday, actually. And uh, I had called friends and some of her family and said, it's her birthday. Obviously, I haven't had a chance to get her anything. Right. Go get her something. I don't care what. Mm -hmm. Something that what you would like. Right. And I'll pay you when I get home. So we got home, we had flowers and presents and a cake, but I was home and she said that was the greatest birthday present well, of her yeah. life. And I was like, yeah, yeah, this was a, this was the greatest birthday of my life and it's not my birthday. But I was like, oh, and the weather was turned, October yeah, weather, October the weather. leaves were changing, which is my favorite time of the year. Right. And I, you know, it was right then you could kind of relax and go, I got my leg. Uh, I got back from Greece alive not dead. I got my leg. Here I am at home. I made it. And so I relaxed and it was just beautiful. And of course I cried 50,000 times and yeah. still do. Look, I can't even hardly get through it without, and I'm doing good today. I'm doing real good because some of the emotions are so hard and some of the pain was so deep and some of the charity and love from other people were so mm -hmm. grandiose and just out of nowhere, like that Amanda girl. I knew her from high school just a little bit. 30 years ago. Wow. And she just never know, do you? Yeah, never know. So don't be mean, but always be kind. And somewhere down the line, it, it might show up. And maybe I did something nice to her back in the day. And she was, I don't know. I don't know. But I certainly have been paying it forward. Right. Since then. Like that, right. this whole thing has right. taken me again. I'm, I've always been a Christian, but once you talk to God mm. at the base level, and then once you see his majesty occur in you, and you're 50 and you're looking back like, what is, what am I supposed to learn from this? You know, I think I was lukewarm. I don't think I was evil. I wasn't a thief. I wasn't a right. cheater. I wasn't right. a killer. I wasn't anything like that. But, right. but I was just lukewarm. Right. And now my wife and I haven't missed church since. We haven't missed mass a single time, unless we're out of town or something. But, right. uh, but not only that kindness and, and stuff that was given to me, I owe it. Right. Not only... Not only to the people that did it to me, but to everybody else for the rest of my life, because that's what I got out of this, mm -hmm. was not only truly my life, but a new life, this life right. that has this perspective. And it has, um, man, it's, it's changed me. It's, it's actually the best thing that has ever happened mm -hmm. to me, even though physically it's the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Right. Uh, mentally. Mentally and spiritually. Right. It, it say, it, I think it saved me, to be honest with you. Sounds like it did. And so when we got home, I had to stay in a wheelchair mm -hmm. or stabilized for three months. So now it's, that's October. Three we left, months. It was October 12th when it happened. So go two weeks and then another three months and I'm in a wheelchair. Mobilized, not, not anything. And so all of my muscles atrophy, my ligaments in my knee shrink up mm -hmm. so that I can't, I, like I could, when I first got out, I couldn't bend my leg any more than about that. It was just, that was as far as my leg you would gotta bend. Re, you got to re-stretch them. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, Josh Landers, very good friend of mine whom I love. Uh, I was going to, to uh, physical therapy and it ran out like your insurance. Mm-hmm. They go, you get six yearly. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa what about an extenuating, like I, I will need six months Mm -hmm. and they're like, well, you get six, so do your best. And so Josh, who is a physical therapist, said, come on over here. He said, uh, I know your insurance is out. I'm not going to charge you anything. And we said, we called it, or I, I don't know how it came, but we call it now cracking my knee. And so I would go in every day for six months and lay down mm. on my stomach. And he would take my knee and put it to where it was stuck, you know, it's not going any further, and then lean on it. Oh, my goodness. And you talk, I mean, I was just going, and I had to, again, you had to stay in the moment and be positive, right? Mm -hmm. Stay in the moment and positive in right pain. here, not 
up there and not one second back there, right here. So I was focused on it and I would take that pain. I'd offer it up for me being such a, a wow. douchebag my whole life. And wow. for all of my, and I was like, you know, let me offer it. <laughs> it's such a weird experience for me to do all these things. I've never done this. And so I was able to take this just excruciating pain and offer it up. And then I was like doing it for other people. Like that's a, I don't even know if you can do that kind of thing. I don't know. But I was like, I'm going to fix it to go through this pain. And I was like, so that Lauren and John have a happy marriage or that Grace makes it out of college right. safe and has a good life. You know, whatever. I was right. just offering it up for everybody. And it turns out you can do that. You can suffer for other people and offer it up. And I was like, wow, I was doing that again. Not because I have an example, but I I was having to do something with that pain right, right there. Right. And you couldn't just grit your teeth and be mad or, you no. know, so you made something positive out of you it. You got a why. Huh? You got a why. Yeah. You, you, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so Josh cracked me back, cracked me back. And in my physical therapy, they go, like, the one of the first days I was in there, I just got to start doing crutches. So, I mean, to go to here to that wall and back, I would have been out of breath. Right. All my muscles atrophied in my arms and my legs. It was just, mm. it was starting over. It was awful. Right. But they'd say, they said to me, uh, stand on this, my broken leg, and lift this leg up. And I was like, okay. And I went, I didn't have enough strength in this thing to hold my body so that I could lift this up. And I just lost it. I just started oh crying. Oh, my goodness. And I got it back, you know. I was like, I'll be okay. Give me a second. Right. And I was like, all right, let's do that. And so they said, do five. And that's where I came up with the, uh, you know, you tell me to do five, I'm going to do 50. Mm -hmm. And so that's what I did in all of my workouts for six months, maybe a little longer. Well, about six months, yeah. Um, they said, do five, and I do 50. Mm hmm I said, do 10, I do, you know, whatever. Right. Then, you know what I'm saying, whatever they told Which me to do. Which is easier said than done. Well, I mean, everything was excruciating. That's Nothing what I'm saying. Easy. Yes, that's what I'm saying. It's easy for me to say, yeah, I'll, I could do that. Yeah, I mean, I had I not been put in this situation and tested like this, right. I guarantee you I couldn't do what I did, but I was. I had, I had no choice. It was right. either turn this way or, you know, if you go the other way, you're probably not going to walk normal right. again. Right, right. And my goal, they said, first thing, what, what are one of your goals? And I said, I want to um, want to be able to walk into deer woods hunting because mm -hmm. I love hunting. I love mm -hmm. the fall. And I said, I want to snow ski. Yeah. And they said, those are your goals. And I said, those are my goals. And so, you know, six months of this or whatever. And then by August of 23, so this happened October 12th, 2022, mm -hmm. the, the break. By August of 23, I climbed Pinnacle Mountain. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. I can't even do that on the easy side. Yeah, well, I did it on the easy side. Well, so. still, that's... You know, it was brutal. Yeah. It was, and it was, we did it in August, so it was yeah, hotter hot. than hell. That's yeah. right. Um, but I did it, and I got to the top, and of course, uh, I broke down, and I was like, I took a video, I was like, they, yes. you know, they tried to kill me, but they, did, they don't know me, son. Mm -hmm. They don't know me. Mm -hmm. They didn't know who they were dealing with. I didn't know who they were dealing with. Right. And I'm not perfect, and I'm still a sinner. I mean, I I did it change. It's changed the whole course of my life. But it didn't just make a me, you know, for St. Francis all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. I'm not performing miracles. Right. Nothing. I'm flawed human. That's it. But it certainly changed my life yeah, it did. Uh, for the better. And then my goal was to go snow skiing in Greece. And I thought, why, te why tempt fate? So I just went snow skiing in Colorado right. in December. So that was wow. um, a year and a month of Later, month, year, two months. It's kind of like that, yeah. yeah. Uh, December 1st, I went with a buddy of mine, Kelly Cochran, and we, we went snow skiing. And I was really worried because right. I was worried about my knee and your you ankles know. and all that. Yeah. I've been snow skiing. Everything. Right. Uh, and we went down the first one. We went down a green. I said, just let me take go. it easy. Right. I'll, I'll know within seconds whether or not this is viable or not. Mm -hmm. And we went down the green. By the time we got up to the bottom, I said, Let's go. I, there you I go. think we're good. There you go. And then I, I posted a video of me coming down a blue or I think it was a right. blue, but and then the sliding mobiles. yeah, I was yeah. sliding into my buddy and that's awesome. I was like, yeah. So that's I reclaimed awesome. that and then uh in May of this year, so twenty four, so this will October will be two years, but in May, I took Grace, she graduated the one in Rome. She right. graduated from U of A. 
Okay, uh, she came home, right? After yeah, that? She, yeah, she made okay. it home from okay. her semester. I was, I was talking about she's no more. She's no more over there, right? No, <laughs> no, but she's still a traveler. Like you wouldn't believe. Oh goodness, they, she's got balls of brass. And Must have. She's goodness. a she's a stud, by the way. She uh, just all her uh, accomplishments academically and and what she's been able to do to, to rise to the heights. I mean, I'd like to say it doesn't come from me, but there are people in my family who have done. You know, like my dad was a CPA tax attorney, so he was a stud, skipped a generation with me. But my older brother's sharp as a tack. I'm not saying I'm dumb. I'm just saying, like, my Grace, my daughter Grace and Lauren, both of them impressed me beyond um, beyond what I ever thought I would accomplish. They've gone way past that. My young, my oldest daughter's a doctor now. So Wow. Yeah. I wouldn't discount yourself too much. I mean, you got to think of what, what you had to learn. You, you were strong coming into this, I think. You know, you're you're a pretty big guy as far as, you know, stocky and everything. So what I'm saying is you wouldn't a small guy like me that, you know, I would, I, over, you know, especially mentally, you know, is what I'm saying too, is you, you, that advice you gave in a dark time, you adapted it to you to make it work. Not a lot of people can do that. I don't know. I don't know. It was I mean, survival. Fighting, you're, yeah. You're fighting I'm, people who are hitting you and throwing you off a bridge. You're fighting to stay alive in a, in somewhat, somewhat of a, I don't know what you want to call that. We'll just call that like a veterinary clinic, right? The big room, right? <laughs> and then, and then, then, then staying positive and in the moment during the whole. Hey, you know, he, he's gonna have to bend his leg. He's gonna have blood clots and everything. Playing right there at the edge of freedom, and they're telling you no, and you're like, no, no, no. <laughs> it yeah. seems like a lot of strings came together to get you to the point you've got to do something. I don't know what it is, but you got to do something. Well, it wasn't just the infection that was the miracle. All of that. That's what I'm saying. Had one thing slipped, then I would have been there and probably right. died. Right. That's what or I'm at saying. Least certainly been infected. And you were you were here for a reason. I don't something. know what it is, but right. you're here for a reason. Right. So so now what do I do with the rest of my life? Well, I'll tell you. Yeah. Positivity. Right. Is in it where that I never even kind of went through my day ever thinking about that. I'm always a fun loving guy and a good time, but. Now, when somebody cuts me off in traffic, I wait a split second for I dog cuss them instead of just dog cuss them immediately. I need to learn that. Too, <laughs> I live I live in this village, and there's a lot of slower drivers. They're older yeah. and retired, you know, and that, that, that test me every day, and I fail every day. Yeah. I mean, at I, least I am aware of it now. I'm aware of it, too. Looking, just, I wish I could do better. Yeah, that's what I said. We're all centered, so it, it didn't make me a saint, but it certainly did change the trajectory of my life, and and I, I am grateful that's for awesome. such a terrible accident. So what about Chad? How, how's he doing? Your your friend, Chad, quit his work. It, it had a it had a truly profound effect on his life too. So I mean, how like he's he's I mean, because we haven't heard what they did. They separated you guys and they drove you off. What they do to him? He jumped out of the car. That's right. That's right. He busted Barry Sanders. his knee. Yeah, but busted his knee. Busted his head open. Nothing real bad. Got up, took off running, and then went to the police station and said, "I need to uh, right. get my buddy. You guys got him." And they said, "We don't have him." And he said. I need to file a missing person. Right. And he said, hey, everybody quit talking English and started yelling around right. in Greek. And he said he got out of there and they were following him and said, come with us, come with us. He's like, I'm not going with anybody. Oh my goodness. So, yeah. So uh, this, this is, this is truly a, an awesome yeah, he, after story, yeah. not during. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, goodness. for sure. Yeah. You, you, my wife and Chad and, and maybe some of the other players that were with daughter, Lauren were, calling here and doing right. this and trying to figure out where is he and trying to get my wife could see me on the phone and she's taking, you know, picture snips and send them right. and they were going, you know, uh, yeah, it just took a coordinated effort for everybody. I don't know. It was, it was pretty gracious. amazing, pretty terrifying. Right. And then at the end, I went back to Europe and made uh. with grace. And I didn't go to Greece. Okay, that's what <laughs> yeah, my, I told Alias I was going to come see him at some point, and and hopefully I do, and I, I yeah. tend to. But I just, I just wanted to go somewhere that I didn't have a barrier. I was right. really anxious right. about it. Right. But you know, I've read something along the way that that the opposite of anxious or anxiety is gratefulness. So if you're grateful for something, you can't be anxious at the same time. I got you. Yeah, you, so you could be grateful that you have the opportunity to go back. That was it. And so that, yeah. again, and those are all ways to stay positive. I mean, it, and it's nothing I, I didn't create this. I'm just right. telling you, kind of like this is as I stumble along here. I was like, right. oh, so when I start feeling anxious, I immediately go to something to be thankful for, grateful Man. for, positive. I could definitely learn that. And it all, yeah, and it all sort of works together. I don't, you know, I'm, I don't know. 
So, so if you don't mind, like you, don't you, mind you played thing. football in high school, so you high were active college. person. You wasn't. Yeah, I was a running back in college. I wow. Know, I, I told some guy that played recently. I go, what? Did, he goes, what position? I said, I played a couple ball in college. This is year twenty four. This will be thirty years since my graduating my senior year. Arkansas uh, Polytechnical Wonder Boys. Where's that at? I mean, I don't. But Russell is that Russellville. Okay, it's yeah. Arkansas Tech. But okay, okay. It was actually Arkansas Polytechnical. Yeah, Arkansas back Tech. in the day, and Wonder Boys always said, "I wonder what in the hell I'm still doing here." <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. Uh, the 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 lady who owns her her and her husband own this business. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Their son is going to Tech this year, Arkansas mm-hmm. Tech. Well, so I asked the guy, "What position do you think?" He goes. Lineman? I was thinking I was linebacker. Like, I was a running back, son. I was fast. I was fast as Kent is right now. He'll go, oh, yeah, I'm running a mid-11, my, my best 100 sprinting. I was a track. I ran track and played baseball. I did everything, but right. uh, was well, 11 flat, and he's running that. He's 55 years old, 54, or something like that. I'm like, yeah, we don't even need to talk about Kent. He, I, I was joking about you know Kent saying that you know he, I was telling him I was going to do that. He goes, well, there's a, there's an app on your phone. It's called Couch to 5K. Yeah, he did. Well, my that problem is me. I've got to get off the couch. That's the first step. <laughs> I know it. I know it. And I would be more inclined to do that. In fact, I'm I'm really intrigued, but I'm all broken now. Like my rent. My gait is, I'm, I'm very, I can hide it. Like, you can't tell unless you know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, I didn't notice it when you were walking in. But, you know, I lost like an eighth of an inch off of this leg because the bone, they had, you know, I lost a bone. Goodness. <laughs> so, so it's an eighth of an inch shorter over here. This and is definitely a hero, you know, deal, man. This is no, awesome. No, if, if there's a hero, it's uh, all those people that supported me and my wife in that from Greece to Athens and then Athens home or Right. Atlanta, right. Greece to Atlanta, not getting home. But it's you can't required. cut yourself short because, I mean, mentally you had to have a hero's mindset to come out of this. I, That's it, what I keep going back to. Your friend, your friend told, he set the stage and you took it. Yeah. And, and it wasn't no easy task for you to take that positive mindset. It was very foreign Ooh. to me. Very, very hard and very different for me. I'm a, I'm a, what you call a sanguine temperament, right? Like I get mad real fast, mm-hmm. but I get mad or I get over it real fast. Right, too, right, right. I had to stop the first part of it. I couldn't, I had to remove my character. Wow. And forgive those guys who did that to you. Yeah. Oh. yeah. That was actually quite easy once I realized that it was going to eat me up if I didn't. I was like, oh, it was real simple. Wow. It was like, you know, medicine, take this medicine and you'll be better. But if you don't, it's going to continue to, like it'll, a, it'll be the wound, right. and not this. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. So that's it. Yeah, went went back to Europe. So I reclaimed my innocence and my independence and my my. I was scared of it, so I faced my fear and I went Again. back and I spent two days in London by myself. I will say that I didn't stray far from someplace I could see that I was like, oh, okay, I know where I am. Like, I, there's probably some PTSD wrapped up in yeah, all this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, of course, anyway. of course, of course. So, um, I mean, because heck, you couldn't trust the police because they were corrupt. So, you, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, Chad having night terrors tells it all to me, right? Because it was scary, but yeah. I was just in the hospital, and you know, while I didn't have me drugged up, I was still had head trauma, you know, big gash here. Yeah, so what about what about that? Did they, did they, what happened to that? I didn't hear about that. I all heard about your leg, so. Uh, they stitched me up like they were stitching up a horse in, in war, you know, right. like in the battlefield or something. Just this big, nasty. I can pull up some of these photos. Well, I was talking about like stateside. What they do for you? Because I think you mentioned that they were worried about the trauma here. Mandy too. was worried about it. Right. So they, I don't know. I can't remember if I did any brain scans. They were just watching okay. me and I just came back okay, good. to normal. Good. Everyone was focused on that. this right here. Yeah. And so they, when I got, even when I got back, they were like, Think about this, how strange this is. If you get injured in another place and you come back here and you don't have a doctor, uh-huh. you gotta gotta you have to get a doctor and they have to accept you as right. you are. Right. I just it was the most bizarre thing because right. we, we went to Dr. Martin, Martin Orthopedics, which I think I saw a sign coming in here of Martin Orthopedics, but he doesn't do full body stuff. He does right. knees. Right. You know, knees and that's his specialty. So I they bet they to, probably had to re break that to refix what they Oh, they, they, they ran. Uh, they ran a, a titanium yeah. rod from my hip. It's, it's. They've got like roofing screws. It's. They're so jagged, and one's like this long. It's like they had an extra one. They're like, oh, just use that one. <laughs> it's just. Uh, it looks so awful in my X-rays, but uh, t- down to connects to my knee, mm-hmm. 
And so the, there's one right there. And goodness. And they, they put all this in there and they said they used to, you know, like brace it and do all this. And, and, and they realized that it caused the bone to die. So they just go like this now. They just put it kind of where it's supposed to be and they yeah. go. And then they just close it that up. That makes more sense. But I mean, and it did. Know. And it's about that thick where the break, break is. Like, you know, a normal femur would be just like that. And right. smooth. It's, it's just huge. And over here on this side, there's a little bit of a, I wouldn't call it a bone spur, but it's just a little where the bone came out and a little bit is that like that. Mm-hmm. And you can see it on the x ray and you can feel it here, but it doesn't cause any pain or anything like that. Goodness so, gracious. That's it. And I'll never be the same. I'll never stop having to, you know, I think you're better though. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's you, mentally. You, yes, I'm saying physically. I'm saying it. It'll never. Right. It'll never stop. But yeah, mentally and spiritually. Mentally, yeah. You're in a better place. It saved me. It saved me. And what a, what a odd thing for somebody to say about such a horrible accident. Right. And you know, here in, I'm sweating. I'm sorry, but here in um, lately they've been having all these people go disappearing in Greece, and I've had people say, "Hey, you actually probably have an obligation." To say something about this because they'll go, oh, Jimmy went missing right. and he's been running his whole life. And or now, he tried to commit suicide yeah, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or they committed suicide. And every time I see something like that, I'm like, Pfft. you don't know. I mean, no. you, it's more than likely not. Doubtful. Very yeah. doubtful. And very they doubtful. are corrupt. And they're corrupt here and they're corrupt. Every, you know, it's evil. Mm-hmm. Evil is out there. Right. And when you see it, it's strikingly ugly. Uh, I don't want to be anywhere around it. No. So, if I was when I was a young man, I paid for it. I'm sorry to everybody that I ever did anything wrong. Right. And for the rest of my life, I am paying everything forward. Awesome. Everything. And so, you know, that was really it. You got any other questions? I don't. Thanks for being on the show. Thank man. you for thank having you. me. This man, is this fantastic. Is awesome. My first experience. I was really nervous, but you're you're doing good. Well, thank you. I just you're I just the, the the whole the whole deal to me is it's, it's all your friend who told you about Warner. Who told you about the the POWs? I it's think I think changer. that was that was that was the life changer because you could get help. You could and if you but if your mind's not right, the help's not doing that good. Yeah, I think he gave you priceless advice. Yeah, <laughs> and and it was me dog cussing him saying, "I saved your life, you son of a gun." Mm-hmm. You know, like what? Because yeah. I did. We were in high school at Russellville at Lands End. If people if this goes anywhere and people know it's Russellville at Lands End, they used to have a. Um, Bluffs out there. They still do, but there's houses on them now, so you can't get to them. But at one place in the bluffs, there was a gap, like, in between this table here. Mm -hmm. And this side was taller than this one. And it wasn't that far, but the problem is there's a tree branch about right here. So you had to to get going fast enough so you could crouch underneath the tree branch to make it to the other side and land it. And that seems complicated. (laughs) It was dangerous. And it was about a 250-foot drop straight down to death, right? And my buddy Warner, the one that gave me this advice, said, uh, I'm going to do it. I said, don't do it. Don't <laughs> no, do it. No. We, we had been, we had already tempted fate. We had been climbing down the bluffs with a garden hose that we found at my girlfriend's house. We were cleaning her, <laughs> her parents' yard up. And we found this garden hose. So we tied it to a tree and we went down the bluffs and we were like, got to this spot. We were like, cool. We let go. Well, it had been it, Stretch, stretch it. As soon as we let go, it went up about 50 feet and we were just stuck on the side of this rock. We had to like, nimbly oh crawl around but anyway that's, that's he wanted to make this jump after we did all that and i said last second i said stop let me go to the other side in case something happens well sure enough he goes and as he's taking off he slips right there and just his momentum now he missed the tree but he caught the other side and landed like this and then went and went backwards and i'm standing right there and i dove i grabbed his leg oh my and goodness. i yanked him up or he would have been dead so instead he went off to west point and became a multi there you go west multi-millionaire point. i had a couple of buddies who went to west point yeah oh did in you? high school studs yes, yeah. gotta be gotta well be they're, they're no longer here but um oh. anyway they were in the military to anyway, go to to go to west, point, west point you have to be a right, stud right yeah and so i told him i said i saved your life you son of a bitch <laughs> give me a plane I, Bring me a plane. I don't know if he did the plane or not. I can't he, remember. But No, he, he said, you can't. I can't see you got blood clots. He did you the best thing. But here, I'm going to tell you a story. But I'll tell, he goes, I'll tell you what I can do. And right. then he told me that story. And he goes. I bet, I bet at the time you're like, gee, thanks. Yeah, I was actually but that was that was. It. I think that was the best thing that happened of the situation. Yeah. Once you, once yeah. you. 
And wow. Chad never leaving me. I mean, I'm not giving it all to Well, no, no, no. Chad, I'm just saying for you mentally, that was mentally, the best thing. Yeah, I'm sorry. I keep trying to go in here and get these photos for you. Know? You're good. I'm talking. Yeah, no, definitely. That was some, some just life-changing stuff, man. What do you do? 